All right, I gotta end this song. It is so ridiculously repetitive. <laughs> Stop. Okay. That's called Columba. Columba. It's got a neat beat. I love. I love the beat. I love the instrumentation, but it's just too doggone repetitive. So I've got to throw on the next one, which is called My Dog is Happy. My Dog is Happy. Um, but before I do that, let me explain a couple of things. Number one, my cool steampunk hat is not going with this machine to my friend Mary Klein out in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. I want to make sure that I've got that right. Yep, Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Mary Klein again is fairly well known on this channel uh, because she won the really cool uh, 12k that I offered as a giveaway prize for the contest when we hit the milestone of 8,000 subscribers. That was an 1885 machine. How, how cool is that? But uh, she also submitted another writing piece. Here I can come out on this shot a little bit. She also submitted another writing piece for the contest that followed that. I'm too tall. She submitted another writing piece for the next contest, which was for hitting 9,000 subscribers, but she was the only entry. And so as a result of being the only entry, you can't have a contest with one entry. I mean, it's just not, it doesn't make sense. It'd be like running a marathon with one person or doing some other, other sort of a contest. So I did, I did post some real nice comments uh, acknowledging the great writing piece that she had done for a 9,000 subscribers contest. And... Uh, Again, if you're brand new to this channel, that was a contest that was built around uh, a mock trip that Bill and I were going to take to Norway to visit Hans. And uh, the person was having to put together a travel package, basically, uh, outlining... I'm going to kind of lean on the table here. My legs are going to go to sleep. Uh, outlining uh, where, we, where we were going to be visiting, kind of our trip plan, and then sell it as the best uh, travel plan out of any of the others that were submitted. Unfortunately, Mary's was the only one submitted, so the contest ended with no declared winner. But after posting some of those positive comments about the good writing piece that she had done uh, and that she posted it to Facebook, uh, I decided, you know what, I'd like to do some sort of a consolation prize for her. So I put together a fun premiere where our friend the pirate, this gentleman here, if you're not familiar with him, this little guy right here ended up finding Mary a real cool machine that would serve as a consolation prize. And uh, we did that down by the bay, and if you haven't seen it yet, it's a lot of fun because uh, I also have the character of Mr. Bean and Herr Obermeister involved as well as they steal the pirate's uh, ship and they drive it all over the Bay of Green Bay. And then finally we all get back into the car where it's warm and uh, we're able to look at this machine that the pirate found for Mary Klein, which is the machine right behind me. It's a, uh, basically it's a Betsy Ross Model 707. Uh, and it was designed originally, and I have to kind of correct myself, because myself and everyone else pretty much worldwide refers to this little machine as a toy sewing machine. But the real intent of the makers back in the 1950s when this machine was made was that it was not going to be a toy machine but it was going to be a miniature sewing machine that would entice young people to want to learn to sew and they would be making uh, doll clothes and other things like that with a miniature sewing machine not a, a cheapy type uh, toy machine where you can't do much of anything with it. And after having gone through this machine in great depth in servicing it, again, I, I treat all machines the same when it comes to my service plan and my optimization. Uh, I go through them surgically. Uh, and I, I show those uh, pictures recently in a premiere where we actually see this little uh, machine, this miniature machine by uh, named after Betsy Ross. We're actually seeing it do a couple of different sew-offs and generating that real cool 
uh, chain stitch that it does. Again, this is not a lock stitch machine. This is a chain stitch machine. And the distinction, again, is that a lock machine or a lock stitch machine uses two threads, one on top and one on the bottom that typically is going to be in a bobbin case or it's going to be in a, you know, in a shuttle uh, or whatever it's in. Uh, and uh, those two threads are going, to, are going to come together in the raceway and create a stitch. Um, on a chain stitch, you only have one thread. It comes off the top, and then there's a very interesting hook system that rotates to the rear. So I guess if you're looking at the machine from the side, it rotates uh, counterclockwise, and the balance wheel, when the machine is running, rotates to the back instead of to the front, like a lot of machines. But through that action of that hook system, down below, it takes that single thread and it creates an utterly fascinating uh, catacomb type stitch on the bottom that is a quasi lock stitch because once you lock off the ends, if you sew two pieces of cloth together or something like that, you're not going to be able to get them apart very easily without ripping that uh, cloth. Uh, it's a real secure stitch uh, if you lock off the ends. So. Uh, you know, there's been a number of phases leading up to this unboxing. Uh, the initial contest that ended without a declared winner. Uh, all the posts uh, acknowledging Mary Klein's efforts. Then ultimately the pirate going to source this cool machine. I still don't know how he got it down to the bay. He told me that he carried it on his boat, but eh, I don't know if I'm buying that. But at any rate, the machine eventually, we, we picked it up down by the Bay of Green Bay. Uh, along with Mr. Bean and the wayward Herr Obermeister that stole the pirate's uh, ship. And then we took it ultimately back to the workshop, and I went through my detailed service on this machine. Again, all those pictures are on Facebook, and I also shared them on that YouTube uh, video as well, showing Mary Klein's Betsy Ross Model 707 uh, sewing. So check it out. It's really a cool, all those, all those premieres are super cool and super fun too. Uh, but now we finally have reached the point where the machine has shown its stuff. It's sewing beautifully. And now it's time to pack it up. And I don't know if there are any uh, premieres. Well, I know there's no premieres, but I don't know if there's any videos on YouTube that show how to pack a, a miniature slash toy sewing machine. So I thought I would actually film this and show you what my method is to pack a machine like this, which is very similar to a full-size machine as well in how I pack it. So we're going to go through that process today. The music bed that kind of accompany, accompanies us, accompanies us, blah, accompanies us through this premiere is all going to have a childlike theme to it. How appropriate, right? A machine that was built to inspire young people to want to fall in love and learn how to sew. Again, a lot of camps on, on the thought here. Some call it a toy machine, but the manufacturers, again, call it a miniature machine that was designed to teach young people how to sew and get them excited about sewing. So that's part of the reason I also included uh, this book that's in my personal collection. I've got a library of books that I sometimes will sign and put into the tote uh, or the box with that machine heading back to that recipient of it, whether the machine was sent in to be repaired, uh, whether whether the machine is being sourced by me and I'm going to be sending it to that customer, kind of like I did recently with my good friend Annette down in Cypress, Texas. I always try to include a signed book. I write a nice little remark in there to that uh, to that owner so that they know how much I'm how, how much I appreciate it and how grateful I am uh, for their trust and confidence in allowing me to prepare that machine for them. So this machine was made uh, by a company, I believe it's out of Colorado, back in the 1990s, right around 1993, and their whole vision was that they wanted to supply books that were interactive, that allowed young people to get excited, inspired, very much like the idea behind the, the machine as well, uh, that this was going to work with uh, that machine to inspire that young person to fall in love with sewing and to have a lot of fun doing it. So as you go through this book that I'm gonna be sending with us to Mary Klein, it's, it's built around kind of an, an encouragement and a reward system where as that young person goes through this, uh, they have different exercises that they can do. Uh, they even have some uh, 
uh, puzzles that they can complete. They learn the basic parts of the machine. Um, they learn how to, you know, and, it, and it's going to vary a little bit on some machines, but they learn some of the, the stitch functions of the machine. They l learn how to, uh, you know, assemble uh, basic garments. Uh, they do different puzzles like this where you can kind of go and follow it in and, and, and ultimately follow the piece of cheese. And no, I didn't, I didn't set this up because this is Wisconsin and the dairy state and cheese. These people out of Colorado are just really, really, really smart. Very smart. So they build all these really cool, fun things. Again, what's our philosophy in the workshop here? It's a playroom, right? So uh, these makers of this book from the 1990s uh, did a brilliant job of creating a fun book that could be matched with pretty much any machine at all. And it's a comprehensive book as well. It goes through uh, all kinds of things, uh, uh, you know, search puzzles, following mazes, the different parts of the needle, uh, winding a bobbin, uh, do-it-yourself stitching, connect the dots. Who doesn't like connect the dots? I know, I know grown-ups like me that still get excited over doing connect the dots and then seeing what it reveals. So this is all part of this sewing book, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on, and it's got projects in here as well for the young, uh, inspired sewer to take on. And it goes on. And it goes on. And it goes on. Oh, wait a second. That was Florida. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. A little project built around Florida. And it goes on. And it goes on. And it goes on. We're up to page, what is this, 39 already. And it goes on, and it goes on, and here's a couple of young folks, uh, a young girl and a young boy that are uh, working on a project, probably with mom, and in this instance, they're using a featherweight. I, I would guess, I can't quite see it, but it probably looks like a, a featherweight, uh, you know, a standard one, a 221. So this book was built around the idea, kind of supporting the theme of the manufacturer's of the Betsy Ross uh, sewing machine that it wasn't a toy. It was built as a tool, uh, a miniature sewing machine that would inspire young people uh, to get excited uh, about using it. And it goes on. 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 And, and this is just, when I, when I went through my library of books, knowing that Mary Klein loves to teach. She loves to inspire people to appreciate sewing machines, and she goes through her, her personal collection and tries to you know, get people to realize how unique the machines are. Isn't that pretty? Gets them to realize how, how unique these machines are and teaches them about the different uh, you know, transitions between different machines, et cetera, et cetera. And from what she told me, uh, this is her first uh, chain stitch machine. These kids look pretty happy, don't they? Presumably kids that have used uh, this book to, uh, to learn how to sew and to just garner the enjoyment of sewing. And again, sewing is healthy. Like I shared in that recent post on Facebook, it's therapeutic. It lowers blood pressure. It uh, reduces stress. So why don't we teach our young people those skills of managing uh, the stress of life early on through uh, incredible opportunities of sewing. So the total book is, uh, if you can believe it, is uh, 71 pages long. So I know this will be a great resource. Uh, oops, this will be a great resource to Mary Klein uh, as she uh, continues to work to uh, inspire people to appreciate sewing machines and teaches them about them, kind of like what we do here at the workshop. So. Uh, She's stepping out into the mission field as well and getting folks excited. And this book, I think, will be a great tool to accompany this uh, Betsy Ross Model 707 from the 1950s. Nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's get busy in packing this up. And to make sure that I had enough energy, just off camera, I've got a little stack of one of my favorite treats. And I do eat them in moderation. 
but these stuffed Oreo cookies. Does anyone else like stuffed Oreo cookies? If you do, type in the chat, I love Oreos, or Oreos rock, or the perfect snack break, or something like that. Maybe it's the perfect project break for you. If you're working on a long project, maybe you have a little stack of these two on the table, and the way that you keep yourself going is to pump a couple of these down the old pie hole and uh, let that sugar kick in. Yeah, I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff in here that isn't good for me. And all of you that have incredibly healthy diets, 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 all of you that have healthy diets and really try to eat healthy are probably saying, <coughs> and some of you are, uh, you know, gluten-free. Some of you might be vegan. Uh, I know uh, one of my friends down in Florida is, uh, is a devout vegan. Uh, these are probably off the list. Maybe they're off the list, depending on what's inside of here, but I sure love them. Yeah. So if you ever want to really get on my good list, instead of bringing me an apple as your teacher, mail me a little box of stuffed Oreos. That'll... Yeah. Let's put on some more music. So this next one, again, is called My Dog is Happy. And I'm going to start launching into the packing of this little machine. And if you've uh, read, or not read, if you've watched my other premieres where you've seen the packing of machines, you're going to see a lot of similarities here. Again, I treat uh, a miniature machine like this, or some people refer to it incorrectly, according to the manufacturers, uh, as a toy machine. I treat it the same as a, as a big boy or a big girl machine, a full-size machine. And that's because... Uh, it has a lot of the same components. Let's get actually get to where we can see the machine. Uh, it's got a lot of the same components. And uh, so when I service it, I spend about two and a half hours on a machine like this. Almost three hours, actually, because there were a number of things to mitigate on this machine when I went through it. Uh, so about three to four hours if you kind of round it up with all the steps involved. And I go from bobbin, which there isn't. Why don't we say instead of bobbin the balance wheel, we'll say, we'll say from hook system to balance wheel uh, on this particular miniature machine. The other thing I should I should stand corrected on real quick is when I did the recent premiere on this machine that's going to Mary Klein, I kind of went around the machine a little bit. I talked about you know some of the work I did. I replaced these with beautiful brass uh, screws to hold the uh, machine securely. I kind of went around. Here's the balance wheel. You see they make it simple on here. They even, uh, and I didn't show this in the other premiere, they even have arrows on the balance wheel so you know which way this balance wheel is going to be turning. Again, it's going to be turning to the rear, not turning to the front, like a lot of the machines that we're accustomed to operating on. So keep that in mind if you own one of these. That balance wheel will turn to the rear, and uh, that's perfectly fine. And I went around this machine. I kind of showed the chiseled look of it. Again, this is a uh, basically a cast uh, aluminum body that's on the machine. I showed you some of my re-chrome work over here. Uh, by the upper tension in that and again this upper tension is not connected to the presser foot bar or the presser foot like most machines are it's strictly spring loaded as far as keeping that uh, uh, that stitch on the bottom which would be a lock stitch uh, nicely defined and then I kind of walked around the rest of the machine there in the back is the uh, presser foot bar you can kind of see the top of it sticking up there in the rear and I explained that because this uh, machine does not have uh, a spring tensioner on the presser foot bar, that uh, if you're sewing a little bit uh, heavier materials, uh, there's really not enough pressure pushing down on that. So I showed you during one of the sew-offs, I kind of held my finger on the top of it, kind of like this, to allow, allow a little bit of extra pressure down on it. But I also explained you could always use uh, something like this, like a magnet, to put on top of there to weigh it down a little bit more if you're sewing uh, more layers of cotton or something like that, if you're making a dowel dress or something like that. Or you could, you know, you can find some other clever way. They make round magnets. You could put a little stack of round magnets on top of there to apply, you know, the, a, a little greater presser foot pressure. Again, what is the rule as far as presser foot pressure? Type it in the chat if you remember. What is the rule on presser foot pressure when you're sewing different materials? I could also go around the threading real quick too, couldn't I? So coming off the spool, we go through this thread guide right here. We go across the machine. Then we go down into that little opening on top. 
and then we come out the front and we go around the tongue of that sticking out there we go up to the uh, discs uh, which uh, you need to kind of pull that thread down in between the discs then we go over here there's a tiny little thread guide right there by the needle bar we then go through a, a hole that goes all the way through the needle bar we go across the face plate we then come all the way down to the needle which I have uh, embedded in the material right now you always do that when you're shipping a machine or transporting a machine always make sure that needle is embedded in the material uh, so that it's protected you don't want to uh, have it sticking up on top because then it can potentially get bent uh, and then you're going to be threading this uh, Betsy Ross model 707 from left to right uh, through the needle so but what I spoke incorrectly about is I was talking about this little lever on the front of here and I guess I was partially right partially wrong I said that it it, it controls the feed dogs which is true but it doesn't control them in the way that I had alluded to. I seem to imply that it was a function of allowing you to drop the feed dogs so that you could do freehand embroidery on this Betsy Ross Model 707. That's not correct. The designers or the manufacturers intent in this little, um, this little lever that's sticking out underneath the bed of the machine is to allow you to change stitch length. Uh, when it's all the way up like it is right now, you're going to have a super tiny stitch as you bring it down further and further towards the, uh, you know, swinging it downward, you're going to lengthen that stitch. And that's a direct result of how it manipulates the feed dog. So that's where I was partially right, but the design and the function and the purpose of it, I was completely incorrect about that. And that's because I, I had raced through getting ready for this and I had not read uh, the original flyer that shows you the functions of this Betsy Ross, you know, sometimes you're in something for over two decades, you've done with, you've dealt with thousands of machines, and you sometimes get a little bit, as my grandfather would have said, you get a little bit too big for your britches, and you think, okay, I, I'm going to look at this machine, got it, got it, done. But some, some machines have just very unique nuances about them, and that's true of this model 707 betsy ross machine so if you have one and you heard me uh, in that premiere where i actually showed this machine so and you heard me describe it as a means of lowering the feed dogs or manipulating the feed dogs or whatever i exactly said that was only about 49 percent correct okay 47 percent correct it does manipulate the feed dogs but for purpose of changing stitch length not for the purpose of lowering the feed dogs for freehand embroidery or otherwise okay so i wanted to correct that the other thing i gestured incorrectly about so i don't want to confuse or mislead anyone is when i was gesturing towards the machine and i was talking about the fact that everyone refers to this as a toy machine everyone refers to it as simply the betsy ross uh toy sewing machine never ever have i seen on on uh the internet uh through youtube videos or otherwise someone referring to it as a specific model which is a model 707 and i believe during the premiere again i've got so many things flooding through my brain when i'm doing a premiere that i sometimes goof up i goofed up on calling this uh, a means of lowering the feed dogs and i also goofed up when i gestured towards a machine about where you can find that model number stamped it's really hard to see i kind of pointed up here by the bed which is not correct it's actually down here, right in this area where I added that, that uh, cool brass screw. It's going to be right across here where it tells you that it's a model uh, 707. So you can check that out on your own machine. And if you were looking up here after watching that premiere, you probably thought, I need to go to the optometrist because I'm not seeing it. Scott said it was hard to see, but it's I'm not seeing it at all. Maybe my eyes are going out bad. Maybe I'm going blind. Uh, no. No, I just pointed at the wrong part of the machine. It's not up here. It's right down here where you're going to find that model stamp number of model 707. Okay? So two things for the record. Again, in the classroom, even the teacher can sometimes get it wrong. So I want to always circle back if I can and make it right. So again, this is for stitch length, not to lower the feed dogs. It does manipulate the feed dogs, but it's not designed for free and embroidery it's for changing the stitch length this little uh, thingy sticking out here 
And then again, the model number is going to be right down here, not up there. All right? There, my conscience is clear, and I can eat an Oreo without my stomach getting upset. <laughs> All right, let's widen this shot, and uh, let's begin the packing process. And again, I'm going to play children's music throughout this. All right, so again, this next song again is called My Dog is Happy. My Dog is Happy. Yeah, that sounds like a happy dog to me, too. Yeah, baby. Wait a second, don't slow it down. I like that upper beat, that fast beat. And I'm going to take off my steampunk hat for right now because my head is really warm. And I get warm packing anyway, even with a small machine like this. All right, let's get into this. Yes, I have my pink glasses on, if you were wondering. Make it more peppy. The dog is happy, for goodness sakes. It sounds like the dog is constipated. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, again, I want to, I always like to send a machine fully threaded. So the first thing we're going to focus on is uh, anchoring down the thread going through this machine so when Mary gets it on the other end, she can unpack it. And I know she'll, she'll take some really cool pictures of her unpacking like she did with that 1885 uh, singer 12k hand crank that she won at 8,000 subscribers but uh, I, I want it to be able to be something that after she gets it unpacked that she can jump into it right away and have some fun so let's anchor off the thread am I too far out or can you see that okay All right, and circling back to the question that I asked before, because I'm not looking at the chat, and I don't know if you typed anything or not. I was talking about presser foot pressure, and I was talking about how you can add a little bit of extra weight to the presser foot bar on this uh, Model 707, and I said, what's the point behind that? Uh, well, the point is, the heavier the material, the denser the material, the more presser foot pressure you want. And again, this not having any spring-type uh, tensioner in it, We've got to create our own additional tension beyond the sheer weight of that uh, presser foot uh, bar weighing down on the material pressing against the feed dogs. And it does lock in place. There's a little, uh, it, when you lower the presser foot uh, uh, bar on this and the lever, it kind of locks it in place so that it can't push it up very much. But still, uh, you don't have the benefit of being able to increase or decrease that. So, so we get creative, right? That's why the good Lord gave us magnets. All right. Well, that didn't sound like much of a happy dog to me. I don't know about you. All right. The next one is something that every parent, grandparent, guardian, etc., needs for a child in the morning. It's a good morning song. Let's hear what this sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. All right, kids, get up. Get up, get up, get up! All right, back to work. All right, let's anchor down the rest of the thread points. the face plate because the thread just kind of dangles there. It doesn't uh, have a, a thread uh, eyelet or anything to hold it, which I think I would have added that to this machine, quite honestly. I would have added an eyelet on the face plate like a lot of machines have, but they decided not to. Okay, 
Okay, so we got all the thread anchor down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on creating a, a, a little protection around this machine on, on the inside of the case with a stretch wrap. And also we're going to, even though this, is a, this machine is being held to this base with a screw in every corner like I showed you on the other Premier, and then these real big uh, brassy type screws that I uh, replaced the old ones with uh, on the front end on the rear of the machine, I still want to make sure that this thing doesn't in any way separate from the base. You know, if something catastrophic happens, I want it to be secure. So we're going to also anchor this machine to the base as well. First of all, we'll go around it. And again, because we're going to be putting this inside of, uh, or rather we're going to be putting a lid uh, over the top of this, we need to be, uh, as we're doing this process, we need to be aware of, of uh, thicknesses, the girth of the protection that we create inside of here because that lid needs to fit over this. That lid needs to be able to fit over this and be uh, secure. Okay, that gives us a nice little, and this is mainly just to uh, kind of seal the machine off. It doesn't afford much protection other than from scratching it or uh, something like that. But uh, I always, this is always part of my process is to make sure that we create layer after layer after layer of protection to safeguard the machine. Okay, so good morning, and now is a birthday cake. So if it's your birthday, either in November, uh, why don't we just stick with November, I was going to say November or December, uh, or why don't we, let's do this, if your birthday was in October or November, because November is starting to wrap up, then this song is dedicated to you, it is a song of honor to recognize the blessing of your birth on your birthday, so I have no idea what it's going to sound like. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it's not a bad song, like a crummy song, because then it'll be like, that wasn't much of an honor. Speaking of honor. I sometimes forget to start class officially. I'm always on time to class, but I forget to start it. So this is called Birthday Cake. Birthday Cake. Ooh, I'm liking it so far. So we put the stretch wrap on and we add a little bit of strapping tape to anchor it down. And I'm gonna, I usually go around it, but I'm just gonna do it by hand because the machine is miniature. kind of seeing that shot, I think. We've just uh, begun the process of cocooning this Model 707 all the way around the machine down to the base. Now we have to wrap up this uh, cord so that these uh, uh, copper contacts don't scratch uh, the base of the machine because we're not going to have as much protection down there.
right, so we just did the cord. Now we're going to strap, strap that down with a little bit of a tape, a piece of tape. That was a fun song, wasn't it? I like that one. Okay, are we done? We've got stretch wrap on it. We have strapping tape to anchor it down. Nope, we're not done. We're going to put a little wrap of uh, bubble wrap around that to pad that even more. Uh, more so to protect the machine than to protect the cord, but uh, one could argue both. So the next one is something that we always hope for in Wisconsin as we enter into late autumn going into the fall, you know, going from the fall to autumn, I should say, and then going ultimately into winter is a sunny day. So that's what this next one is called, is Sunny Day. So we need some bubble wrap. tuck it into the body a little bit and I'll go around this with just one or two little swipes of, of uh, stretch wrap and kind of anchor it to the machine body so that when we slide that lid over it's going to clear uh, this side of the machine. So let's anchor it down and uh, then we'll keep on moving forward. whenever you apply a layer of uh, stretch wrap you always follow it up with a piece or two of strapping tape uh, to anchor it off. Stretch wrap is wonderful uh, but it even though there are some types of stretch wrap they say basically you know like the, the, the stuff you use for palletizing things uh, they say that it's kind of self sticking uh, and it's probably true to some extent, but I think to be absolutely sure, absolutely sure, you always want it even with stuff like that. And I've got a friend that works in a factory type setting. As a matter of fact, you would have seen his premieres that I did. I shot video for him when he did that car show locally. If you follow me uh, real closely, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, he had his uh, first annual car show at his detailing shop, which is really, really close to the workshop. And I shot video of all those super cool cars. And he, uh, while he's not doing that, because he's still building his business up, uh, he works at a local factory and does a lot of work with uh, palletizing things and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, He's the one I believe that said to me, you know, you always got to anchor things down. You can't just trust that something's going to stick like that. So he does it probably even more than I do. So I just said, I believe you, man. I believe you. Like I said, sometimes a teacher, always a student. And I find that I can learn from anyone that I have the privilege to talk with. Anyone. So... Now we've got a, a good base of protection started with this Model 707. Uh, we've got uh, the stretch wrap around there. We've got a layer of uh, strapping tape. Then we added the cord to the back of it. If I kind of turn it around again. 
It almost looks like one unit, doesn't it? Which is always our goal. We've got that uh, cord protected. It's not going to scratch the machine. It's not going to come loose. It's not going to be dangling. And so we've done a real good job there of beginning to protect this miniature, this miniature uh, Betsy Ross machine. All right, let's pick another tune. So the next one is called I've Got a Baby Sister, which, you know what? One of the new characters that you haven't seen a lot yet is this little girl right back here who happens to be a niece of Dr. Singer. And if I zoom in on her shirt in relation to this song that, again, is titled I've Got a Baby Sister, look at what this interesting little character's shirt says. I think you'll be able to read it. You might be able to read it. Her chin is down a little bit, but it says, I'm a big sister. I'm a big sister. So there you go. All right, let's stop right about there. I think that'll be about the right distance. Yes, I'm going to put you back. I know you're camera shy a little bit. I'll put you back by your, 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 little, your other little friend that has a cool leather satchel. All right, let's hear what this sounds like. I've got a big sister. So now our next step, and you probably have already guessed it, is we're going to carefully gauge out some bubble wrap to go around the, uh, the head of this uh, Model 707. But we have to keep in mind, again, clearance of that lid. I think we'll be able to do okay. We're, we're, we're good to go on the right side, the left side, and the front. The back side is where we're going to be a little bit tight. I don't know if you can see that or not. If I hold it like this, I've got to turn my screen around now. See, we're okay on this side, but look at on the back side right here. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be reasonably tight between where that lid comes down and the back of this machine. So there, that's gonna limit us a little bit on what we can do as far as the number of layers of bubble wrap. I'm guessing probably about two to three is what we would do. Again, my personal choice is always to put the bubbles facing out. Yeah, I could almost afford to cut this, uh, cut this down the middle, but we're just going to kind of tuck it in there. And I know I ripped off more than I need, that's for sure. fun little song, wasn't it? Kind of the big sister song. And again, when you're working with something like this, just be, uh, be aware of uh, clearance when you're having to put a lid on. Because that lid is going to be uh, designed to be close to that machine body and then we're adding this extra thickness to it, so it, uh, it can create challenges for us if we don't keep that in mind as we're going through the wrapping process of safeguarding that machine. We're still looking okay at this point, and I've got one, got almost three layers on the back. I've got uh, two layers on the front, so I'm going to bring this around. And again, our goal is to make it snug. And I think that'll be just fine. So I thought I'd pull too much off of that roll, but it looks like I intuitively knew exactly how much we needed to have. I've done this once or twice, you know, I have. Once or twice. And kind of like the barber shop, if if this here is going to create an obstacle for us, and you know what else I just realized? I just realized something that I'm going to have to correct, because if I remember correctly, 
with a full size spool of thread on the top of here it is not going to let me get that lid all the way down. We're actually going to test that right now. I'll cut this back a little bit and then we'll test it, but I think I'm going to have to surgically cut into the top of that stretch wrap, lay that spool sideways, and then seal that area off again. I believe that that is the case. Again, I, this is the first time that I've done a packing video on a miniature machine specifically like this Betsy Ross model 707 so it's a little bit of a learning curve for me uh, as well even as much as experience as I have so we've cut that tuft off the top a little bit and of course I have to pop a little bit of the bubble wrap if anybody has a phobia about that I should probably put a warning on this uh, video so that last one again was called I've Got a Big Sister. And now the next one is going to be, and this sounds like a real fun song. You think about all the games that we played as kids in that. This one is called uh, Try to Catch Me. Try to Catch Me. Yep, see my hunch was correct. A full-size spool of thread is not what these manufacturers originally had in mind. So we're not able to get the lid all the way on because that spool that I have on, on uh, this machine right now for Mary Klein is a full-size spool. So we have to do a little bit of surgery now, which is okay. Try to zoom in on this so you can watch what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just roll this back a little bit, expose that spool, and now what I need to do is I need to make a cut right about there and then see if I can. Uh, lift this spool up and turn it on its side. I'm actually going to use Let that be a lesson to all of you. I was talking about the clearances on left and right and on the rear, and our main focus was on that rear because of how tight that lid was going to fit. But we forgot about the size of this spool being designed for a full size machine, and this is a miniature machine. So that case was not designed to accommodate a spool like this. All right, so we're, we're successful in getting that that spool exposed now. So now we're going to carefully lift it up. I'm going to try to lift it up. Actually, what I'm going to have to do as well, and this is really showing the, the fallibility of learning, because we have all of those take points down on the thread, we're going to have to take the thread, excuse me, we're going to have to take the uh, the tape off of this spool in the center that's holding that thread from unwinding and we're going to have to manually unwind that thread a little bit because we can't do it anywhere else uh, because it's all tagged down. So I've gotten that piece of uh, thread off. I'm going to carefully lift this up. We've got that thread lifted up now. Now we're going to try to tuck it into place so that it's not as high profile and then we're going to have to seal up that hole all over again. And that should do it. That should give us enough clearance that we're going to be able to... Uh, and because I have it on the side now, I'm not going to retake that uh, thread down because it's not going to be going uh, anywhere with the way that we're having to position that spool of thread now.
So that was try to catch me. The next one is put on your dancing pants. I should skip this one because I'm going to be doing some real control. Yeah, what the heck? Let's just do it. Widen this shot a little bit. Yeah, baby. All right. So we did our surgery. I'm happy to report that the patient is in recovery and doing very, very well. So I'll zoom in on that again so you can kind of see what we did. I'll pull that back and then we'll close it all up. We had that spool standing up straight on the spool pin. That was not going to work with this lid clearance, so we turned it sideways. So now we should be good to go. Yeah. Button this all up. Try that lid again. Hopefully that lid goes all the way down. I'm still catching on something. Is it the sheer bulk of this, maybe? Because that should be enough unless I have to rotate it all the way onto the side but that would be silly I would I would then want to rotate it to the front uh, it's hard to tell if this extra bubble wrap is causing just a little bit of a catch on top I'm gonna to try it one more time otherwise we're gonna we're gonna make one more adjustment and we're gonna move that uh, spool to the front of the machine because we have lots of extra clearance there Yeah, that's just real super, super snug. But I would recommend if you ever pack one of these uh, Betsy Ross 707 models, that when you, if you're going to use a full size spool of thread like I did, put that spool of thread towards the front of the machine where you've got a lot more clearance and it'll make your life a lot easier because we are super duper tight. And that's our goal. We want it to be tight, but at the same time, um, it would be a lot easier if we had this spool to the front side, um, you know, right, right about in there instead of up here. So I think, I think we can sneak it by. We're going to, we're going to move forward with it. Uh, but I'm probably going to have to trim. I may have to trim this bubble wrap back even a little bit more. I probably will do that. Let me put on another song first. So put on your dancing pants was the last one. The next time, the next one is going to slow us down and it's called bedtime, bedtime.
going to tuck this in nice and tight so we get it as flat as we possibly can. And we know that we're really, really pushing the clearance of this machine right now. So I'm just going to take that down. Now we're going to around with, go around it with stretch wrap. Now we follow up with strapping tape to anchor that down. bedtime, doesn't it? You see the little one's eyes starting to close near the end. Mom or dad is next to them. They're safe. Maybe even, you know, stroking their hair or something like that, or maybe brushing their hair. And then they're out. So I'll kind of rotate this around a little bit so you can kind of see it from all edges. Again, on the front, no issues with clearance at all. We're good to go there. Um, also on the faceplate side here, uh, we've got a fair amount of clearance as well. Uh, the lid should not be an issue. On the back, that was our worry area, uh, but I think we're also fine there. And again, we've got, uh, I believe it's close to four layers, four layers all the way around. I know it's more than three, because we had three and then we wrapped around it again. So right around three to four layers. Also on the balance wheel side, uh, we're good to go as well, as far as clearance. And the only area I had not really focused on, and now I am focused on it, is uh, the top clearance. We were really, uh, I mean, we were really defeated uh, with that spool standing up vertically. We've turned it sideways, that helped a lot, but still we are real super close. And uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a fair amount of stress on the hinges on both sides of this uh, uh, Betsy Ross base, this red base. So, as I had done recently for Annette's uh, Swedish Beauty, when I packed that one, and there was a fair amount of stress on the uh, hinges of that case, what I do then is when I put that case on, I strap it down and compress it a little bit to take the pressure off of those hinges. Because we don't want to overstress the hinges either, otherwise that, those hinges could give out. Because they're only basically tapped into... Uh, the the base, which is a uh, you know partly yeah, I, I would say it's partly wood, partly cardboard. Uh, it's probably more wood than cardboard, but it's a combination of both. So we've got to be mindful that you can only stress that so much uh, when you're putting uh, a lid on that's going to be real snug and kind of pressing up against those hinges. Does that make sense? So uh, that's why I sometimes call this the science of packing. There is a lot of science incorporated into it when it comes to getting everything just right so it all works together and ultimately the goal is pretty simple the goal is that that machine arrives and it's not damaged it's safe and this is going to be traveling all the way down to uh, uh excuse me all the way down all the way to uh greensburg pennsylvania i have no idea how far that is i'm just going to find out real quick because i'm curious now
bump this. Uh, yeah, the media thing is up, so I think we'll be able to hear it okay. I'll just bump them all up temporarily, and I'll silence them again so I don't get a call uh, ringing through. So let's find out how far this um, this miniature Betsy Ross Model 707 is going to be traveling. Distance from Greensburg, Pennsylvania to Oconto, Wisconsin. The drive from Greensburg to Oconto is 726.3 miles. So I, I said it backwards. I realized it kind of like Mary was sending it to me, but it's the same thing. So over 700 miles, this little uh, miniature machine is going to be traveling, and that's part of the reason we go through the extra steps of making sure that it is safe. Because how disappointing would that be after uh, I surprised Mary by giving this consolation prize? That wasn't part of the deal. Uh, but she had done such a fabulous job in writing that piece that I decided to do that. And then she gets the machine and it's damaged. That would just, what do the young people say? That would just suck. Yeah, that would suck. We don't want, we don't want to have a great event turn into a sad event. So let's see what the next one is. Here come the raindrops. I hope that that's not true. We've had quite a bit of rain here. I don't know about by you, uh, but uh, here come the raindrops whether we like it or not. All right, let's see if we can get that lid back on. I'm just scanning the surface here to make sure I didn't forget anything that has to go into the case. I think we're okay. That is super duper snug. So now we have to take the stress off of those hinges because when I had to compress that down right now to lock those hinges, there's a lot of pressure now pushing up, stressing the hinges on both sides. We gotta, we've gotta fix that right away. We gotta fix that right away. And we're gonna do that by strapping down both edges of this and compressing it so that that stretch wrap is taking the pressure instead of the hinges. Got one side strapped down now. Now we need to reinforce that with strapping tape. And because of the makeup of this case covering, which is like a real thin, almost a paper thin vinyl, when you're putting the strapping tape on, you got to be really, really careful that you don't touch that, or you're going to be pulling, uh, you're going to be pulling the layer off of that, probably ripping it in some way. So I've got to really guide this. Uh, this tape now and make sure that it stays within the boundaries of that stretch wrap. Really, really careful. And we're only going to go around two times because that'll create more than enough strength to reinforce what we've already done with the stretch wrap. Okay, so I'm going to slide this back now. We're going to Rip that tape off. Then I was I was press it down. You kind of hear that popping. Again, our goal is to make it one unit. So 
we press down on it to make sure that it's going to have all the air bubbles out because then it's going to provide even better protection. We have to do the same thing to the other side now. Uh, otherwise, this hinge over here is going to be gritting its teeth all the way to Pennsylvania trying to hold that lid and base together. We want to help it, so we're going to add that stretch wrap and that strapping tape. Okay, so we just had a rainstorm. Here comes the raindrops. This next one, all of you that are moms are going to love this song, and this is to honor all the moms out there. It's called I Love My Mom. I love my mom. It doesn't matter if your mom is still living or if she's passed away, uh, but it's a love that never fades. Wouldn't you agree? If you Let me challenge you. If you love your mom, living or not, type it in the chat. I love my mom. Would you do that, please? Trying to compress it just a little bit as we're doing this. Okay, now we're going to reinforce that with strapping tape. And again, really watch your tape when you've got a kind of a vinyl base like this, a covering on the case, it will very easily tear if you get tape stuck to it. it down. So now we've done a couple of things. We've uh, we've taken the pressure off of those hinges. Again, these hinges, uh, when we compress a lid down like that and the space is so tight, it creates an upward pressure against these hinges, really creating a lot of stress. And again, like I showed you in the other premiere, there's only two pins right here and two pins on top that hold those two clasp pieces together. So we've got to give it every help that we can. And this does it on this side, and then this does it on the other side. So now what we're going to do is we're, we're going to cocoon the entire case because my plan, and my plan may change, my plan at this point is that I'm not going to put this in a tote. I'm going to create a thick uh, barrier around it with bubble wrap sufficient that it's going to be compressed uh, and uh, it's going to afford ample protection uh, to get the uh, machine to where it needs to be. The only thing I'll have to kind of calculate is whether I'm going to send this book with the machine, if I can figure out the best way to do it, but in all likelihood I'll probably send this book and this last little sew-off that was the original sew-off that the owner gave me uh, with the machine, I'll maybe probably send this under separate cover to Mary just in a in a padded envelope or something like that because my main focus is this this is not likely to get damaged uh, this is a lot more vulnerable so rather than trying to put too much into here uh, we'll probably just send the machine by itself and then send this separately and again I think all of you know this but I appreciate all of you so much and yeah that'll be an extra expense to me but Mary's worth it Mary's worth it, totally. All right, so let's see what we got here. I love my mom. So that last one was to honor moms. And maybe it's even uh, for expectant moms as well. They're not technically a mommy yet, but they're, they're about as close to a mommy as you can get without being a mommy. So maybe that's also for ladies that are expecting as well. 
All right, this next one is called Happy Mistake. Happy Mistake kind of describes this premiere uh, packing video as well, too, doesn't it? You know, the mistake I made with the vertical clearance with a spool on top and blah, blah, blah. And the mistake I made in the earlier premiere in describing that little lever that sticks out the front as a way to drop the feed dogs and pointing at the wrong spot of the machine uh, as far as where it's stamped with Model 707. You still find happiness in mistakes too, can't you? That's kind of what this song is saying. Happy mistakes. All right, so let's focus now on cocooning the rest of this Model 707. And I'm going to go to my slightly wider stretch wrap for this. You can see one I've got wide, one I got narrow. We're going to use this one to cocoon the rest of the machine. Now what we're doing as well is cocooning it, but we're also creating pressure on these latches so that they can't pop open too. Gears and go over the top now. And we are going to strap the uh, handle down. The handle is made out of plastic, so I don't want that sticking up and exposed in any way where it could get broken. All right, now I'm going to switch back the other way. Now we need to strap all this down, so you'll see me go around it with strapping tape now. close to the bottom as well. Now I'll just kind of work my way back up. I do a little, little crisscrossing on it. Just a little bit of crisscrossing. And I always press it down. Again, the goal is to make it a single unit. Make it a single unit, right? We'll put a couple across the top as well, because again we've got a layer of stretch wrap that we just added, so we want to anchor it now to the rest of the unit to make it a single unit. So our next phase obviously will be, uh, now we're going to be adding multiple layers of uh, bubble wrap to this as well. Again, a lot of people look at a case and they just go, well, it's a case. Do you have to protect it? The answer is absolutely yes. 
So we'll probably go between five to seven layers thick. Five to seven layers, which translates to probably a, a, a shell around it that is right about like that. Which I think will provide more than ample protection to this uh, machine. Let me throw on another piece. I'm going to decide, decide whether I, I create a bubble wrap barrier on the bottom or whether or not I'm going to uh, look at the prospect of... Uh, a separate uh, type pad on the bottom that I'll cut to fit that. But first of all, I'm also going to add a little bit of tape to the bottom as well because we want to round that with stretch wrap as well. So we want to make that also a single unit. And on a little uh, case like this and uh, a miniature machine, I'm not as concerned about marking it front or back. So uh, you'll notice probably that in this instance, I will not go to the effort of saying front or back on it. Um, we'll just continue uh, with the packing process. And yes, I remember where the front is, I think. We've got a 50-50 chance. Yeah, we won't worry about it. <laughs> it's almost like the uh, shell game, isn't it? Where the which uh, which shell has the P? Oh, let's see here. Okay, this next one is kind of a contrast in words when you think about it. It's called cute cute avalanche. Cute avalanche. I don't know anyone that's ever witnessed or seen or you know been a part in or something like that and actually survived an avalanche. I don't think there's anything cute about it, but. Apparently in this kid's song, there is. Let's see if I have a pad that'll, I can cut the fit that, otherwise we'll just move forward with a uh, bubble wrap. Yeah, yeah, that'll work nicely. We'll put this other piece back. And while I'm not absolutely sure which is the front of the machine, I know where the top is. So obviously when this is packed, the label will go on top uh, to signify that that is the top of the machine uh, so that, that the postal workers have at least a guess or a clue as to how to orientate the package. Okay, so that was Cute Avalanche. Next one is called Spring Fling, which sounds more like something for college than for kids, but I don't know. Why don't we just call it Spring Vacation?
Okay, so now we have to anchor our current machine to this base. So we're going to use the same method of strap tape, uh, excuse me, stretch wrap and strapping tape. Thankfully now we don't have to worry about that thin vinyl coating on the case because the case is protected. So we can be a little bit less concerned about that. Not always go where you want it, but thankfully until you press it down, you can usually save it a little bit. Okay, so now we are going to press it down. Hear all that popping? That's not me, thankfully. That's uh, the impact that we're bringing as far as making it a single unit. So now you can see we've got excellent padding on the bottom. Now we need to focus on the four sides and the top of this uh, miniature sewing machine, this Betsy Ross Model 707. Oh, I can do this for you too, just kind of, you can see all sides of it. Okay, so let's get a little bit more music on and we'll continue the process. Okay, so the next one is called uh, Ballerina, Ballerina. Yeah, that totally sounds like a ballerina song, doesn't it? I'm going to get a little drink of water. Then I'm going to clear the space around this machine a little bit so that I can use a full-size roll because I'm going to have to go around several, several times in order to achieve that seven layers that I want. Five to seven layers. Probably closer to seven. Set this book to the side as well so I don't forget to package that up separately and send this. And my personal preference is to put the uh, bubbles facing out.
We're going to be up to two layers in just a second. There's two right there coming around the side. Four layers. Five layers. Six layers. seven layers. That was a pretty song, wasn't it? The ballerina one? And I'm going to go across the front and then end it right there. So we're going to have a little bit more than seven on two sides of this parcel. So that's seven layers all the way around. If you want to look at the thickness of that, I'll kind of lift, lift this up and show you from the side. That is the equivalent of a super, super heavy gauge corrugated box. Even more so because it's going to have those bubbles facing out like little airbags and layer after layer after layer creating a shield, a hard shell uh, to safeguard the case. Uh, it, it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be fabulous. Okay, so that was Ballerina. Ooh, this will all be fun. Now we're, going to, now we're going to bunny hop. The next one is called Bunny Hop. So obviously next we're going to be doing stretch wrap to anchor down all of this bubble wrap and then once we anchor down all the bubble wrap with stretch wrap, then we're going to go over the top of that with strapping tape. And I'm looking at my strapping tape right now. I'm going to grab another roll because we're going to need it soon. We're going to need it quite soon. We'll set that right in there and get us all set. So again, Bunny Hop. Let's see what you think of, of uh, the song Bunny Hop. It's a children's song. I know, I know. Make sure you go all the way to the very bottom edge, close that off. All the way to the bottom edge. Slipped underneath. Should be good. 
Strapping tape now? Perfectly timed. Perfectly timed. So press that down. Make sure that it's uh, anchoring that uh, stretch wrap in place nicely. Okay. Now we're going to work on trying to pull this up and over. We're going to have to add some supplement to it because this is not going to extend far enough in to cover that uh, handle. And uh, again, if this were a more sturdy handle, I might leave it exposed so that some, you know, a postal worker or such could grab it and, and carry it. But this thing is so, so lightweight uh, that we really don't need to be concerned about that. So we'd, we'd much rather tuck it in there and protect it. So I'll cut a little piece that's going to be about six or seven layers thick and kind of tuck it in there once we uh, tape all this down. And we will not want to lose track of which end is up. All right. So that again was called Bunny Hop. The next one is called Fantasy Land. Fantasy Land. Applying quite a bit of pressure down to really make that a sturdy uh, barrier. I mean, even if we were to leave it like this, which we're not going to, the top of there with all that those tape layers is really, really quite sturdy. If we were to throw a label right over that, but we're not going to do that. Since we had those pieces of tape going like this from front to back, we're just anchoring them down.
remember we have that real thick pad on the bottom but we'll have to also anchor all of that together as well so we'll be bringing some tape from this side to this side and then I'll go around the bottom of it to anchor that down as well and this is packing on steroids but something like this this Betsy Ross model 707 it really is it's a treasure and it deserves extra protection so that's why we're going to the extent that we are so this next one is called uh, Robot City let's hear what this sounds like like this is and yes I could drop it and it I could drop it and it would not get hurt at this point all right so now we just have only one point that's vulnerable and that is right up here where you can see through there and you can see the handle and the opening so now we need to do a little patch piece that's gonna go over that we're gonna strap that down and then we'll uh, be wrapping this premiere up because I'm not gonna insult your intelligence by putting on fragile stickers I'll put a fragile sticker on each side and uh, and then obviously the label for the customer as well and uh, this will pretty much be ready to go into the mail so and again we've got padding on there that I mean it is it is really well protected Fold this down to fit the area of protection that we're looking to do, which is right about like that. See that? So we just have to fold this all the way down and get the layers that we want. We've got two, three, four, five, and six layers. I think that'll be sufficient. Because we already have protection all the way around the outer edges. All we're, all we're really doing is protecting this, but we're going to be adding another six layers to the entire top of this package to protect it. So we're going to have the equivalent of a lot. <laughs> That's my new measurement system, a lot. Don't you hate when that happens? You're working with tape and it just... Yeah. Fun little tune, wasn't it? Robot City. Robot City. And now we have Summer Shower. We're definitely not in summer anymore, but I guess if you're in Florida, Arizona, Hawaii, or somewhere like that, maybe you always have summer. So this is for you if you're in one of those hot spots that never really ever 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 cools off. <laughs> Press it down nice and tight. Don't let it be flimsy. And we're not going to put any stretch wrap over this. We're going to anchor down with strapping tape for this fill-in piece on the top.
<laughs> I thought you loved that. Press it down, press it down. Okay, now we need to anchor this down up here. And our tape just ran out, so I'm glad I gra grabbed that other roll. wasn't it? I really like the uh, instruments that were in there. They blended together so beautifully. Again, the reason I'm adding this extra tape is we put those strips kind of going over like this. So now we're making sure that they're anchored down properly. I've learned after shipping packages all over the world for many years that you don't take anything for granted. You don't take anything for granted. Oh, it's only going a short distance. It's amazing what can happen in a short distance. And as Hans, Hans highlighted in one of his letters a while back, the intensity of what a package is exposed to from a standpoint of G-force and everything else all of a sudden reveals the logic behind packing at this level. You know what I mean? So we have an incredible number of layers on top. We have more than sufficient uh, protection all the way around all sides of the machine, the bottom of the machine. We've got a really well packed uh, machine and case at this point. And remember inside of that case we also safeguarded the uh, Betsy Ross machine itself by putting a, about three or four layers of bubble wrap on all sides of the machine as well. So this is literally, I mean, if the USPS people want to play catch with it, I'm not concerned unless it falls like off the Umpire State Building or something like that. Then I don't know. It might even do okay then. But I, uh, I, w I certainly wouldn't want to test that theory. So this obviously is our top. I am going to uh, leave it like this and, and start to cut out the label, which I'll do once the the uh, premiere ends. So the label will go up on top to signify that that is the top. I'll put fragile stickers all the way around this and then uh, the special book uh, that I picked out for uh, for Mary Klein to go with this machine so she can tie the two together beautifully. A, a wonderful learning book from the 1990s uh, showing the fun of sewing and teaching young people to get inspired and to get excited about even teaching themselves a little bit and all kinds of fun exercises 
uh, will be sent under separate cover. I just didn't want to try to incorporate it into this. I would either damage the book or it would compromise the integrity of the shell that we just created and the protection. So it's, it makes a lot more sense to send this and uh, this extra little sew-off showing how the machine was sewing originally, which is not a good thing. Uh, we'll send those two together, probably along with a little note as well uh, for Mary to uh, realize how much we appreciated uh, her great submission for that last contest for 9,000 subscribers. I know Hans and Bill, Hans and Bill were really bummed that we didn't get more people that participated, but I know it was a little bit more of a demanding contest, a little bit more complex, uh, and that may have deterred some people from stepping into the ring, but it definitely did not deter uh, Mary Klein. And that's why I went through this extra effort of wanting her to be acknowledged. So that's about it. This is how you safeguard a miniature or toy sewing machine, depending on which camp you're in. Uh, and it's just a matter now of putting the label on, the fragile stickers, and taking it to the post office. So Mary, this is going to be heading towards you real quick. Uh, and then look for that. I don't know if the envelope will arrive first or the... Uh, the machine itself but if the manual arrives first you'll have a chance to kind of thumb through that and think of some fun things to do if the machine r arrives first it's already threaded up and uh, you'll be able to start enjoying that so congratulations again to Mary for a great effort on the last contest for 9,000 subscribers uh, and I hope you found this, uh, this special packing video helpful uh, in the event that you either have to receive or ship a miniature toy type machine that's in a case and what can we end with what kind of song can we end with oh I gotta end with this just based on the title assuming that it was named appropriately robot boogie robot boogie Come off the tripod, get a little bit closer so you can kind of see what we just accomplished. And I will reinforce that a little bit more on the bottom as well. <laughs> yeah, let's make fun sewing, right? That's what this is all about. I like these people out of Colorado. I like Colorado people, especially the ones that published this book back in the 1990s. All right, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. We still have all this. What a cool book. And there were two additions to this too. This is one of the two additions that were made by this company. There may have been more than, more than two, but I know there were two for sure. All right, so let's finish up this packing off camera. And then it's gonna be heading towards Greensburg, Pennsylvania.
God bless everybody.